Hello, we're going to start chapter four. Um, in previous chapters, we talked about motion in one dimension. Now we're going to expand that uh, to motion in two and three dimensions, and then eventually get into projectile motion. Um, all right, so let's first define what position is when you have multiple dimensions. Um, when you're talking about one dimension, it was pretty easy. You had a straight line. Um, you can either have a positive or negative value. But when you have multiple dimensions, we need a better way of explaining that um, in a vector form. So the position vector of a particle can be described by um, this position vector r uh, with the arrow over top to denote that it's a vector. Um, with respect to a reference origin. All right, so the reference origin in most cases is just going to be 0, 0, 0. So the x coordinate 0, y coordinate 0, z coordinate is 0, which is kind of at the middle of our graph. The uh, displacement then is going to be the change in position vector during a certain amount of time. Um, so if I wanted to show the change in position, all I would do is say what the second position is, and I would subtract the first position, or uh, the final minus the initial, just like we do with the delta symbol in other cases. Um, and to do that, we can just look at each term separately. So you're going to take uh, subtraction of your of your i term, subtraction of your j term, and then subtraction of your z terms together. So let's do an example with that. Um, a rabbit runs across a parking lot uh, on uh, a parking lot on which a set of coordinate axes has strangely enough been drawn. Uh, the coordinates in meters of the rabbit's position as functions of time are given by these equations. All right, so these kind of uh, equations should be pretty familiar to us from 1D motion. Um, so you can have a separate equation for the x direction or the x position, and uh, then another equation for the y position. All right, so at time is equal to 15 seconds, what is the rabbit's position vector r in unit vector notation and in magnitude angle notation? So unit vector is going to be the ijk, magnitude angle is, is the resultant magnitude of the vector um, and accompanied with the angle. All right, so uh, the x and y coordinates of the rabbit's position are given by these two equations, um, which are the, uh, are the scalar components of the rabbit's position vector r. All right, so let's start with r. And we're going to say r is going to be a function of t, because both x and y components are functions of t. Uh, so r is going to be a function of t. And that is just going to be x as a function of t in the i direction plus j as a function, uh, excuse me, y as a function of t in the j direction. All right, so really we're just taking this is our x of t, this is our y of t, uh, and we're putting it in unit vector notation. Now our t is equal to 15 seconds. Uh, so all I would want to do to find the position for each is plug in that 15. All right, so x is going to be uh, let's see, negative 0.31 times our time squared, so that's just going to be 15 squared, plus 7.2 times 15, plus 28, and that gets us 66 meters. Y is going to be similar, so we'll take the Y equation, which is 0 0.22 times T squared, Uh, oops, minus 9.1 times t, which is 15 seconds, plus 30. Okay, putting that into a calculator, uh, we get negative 57 meters for that. All right. Um, so just in unit vector notation, that's just going to look look like this. So our vector is going to be equal to 66 meters in the i direction minus 57 meters in the j direction. Okay, um, now, but it also asked us uh, to solve it in the magnitude angle notation. Um, so to do that, we can just use Pythagorean theorem. Um, let's jump over to the next slide. So. That's just going to be simple. R is going to be uh, our square root of x squared plus y squared, uh, which is going to be equal to the square root of 66 squared 
plus negative 57 squared. This negative is going to be squared, so the negative will, will go away and they'll add together. Um, so our r value is then going to be 87 meters. So this is the resultant r uh, magnitude. I didn't write a vector uh, symbol there because uh, it's not a vector without a direction. So let's get it a direction. Uh, so the direction can be found by really any of the um, uh, trigonometric functions, either tangent, sine, or cosine, because we know all the different sides of the triangle. Um, but we're just going to use tangent to pick one. So theta is going to be the inverse tangent of opposite, which is y, over adjacent, which is x. Uh, so that is going to equal, um, so we can just go ahead and plug things in, it'll be negative 57 divided by 66, and you get negative 41 degrees. Um, so there's our angle, so now we have the full vector, and if we look at um, our graph over here, can see that that's exactly what is shown. So you're you're going over your x coordinate, then you're going down your y coordinate. So you kind of like this. That makes our triangle, and the resultant is going to be from where we started to where we ended up. And our angle of negative 41 is our angle right there. It's always when we set it up like this, it's going to be based off of the positive x-axis. So negative 41 is going to be clockwise around um, around our coordinate system. Uh, off of the x-axis. Okay, now if I wanted to, um, let me move this out of the way, I wanted to see what the position looks like over um, a certain amount of time, you can actually graph it, and when you graph it you can see this sort of shape here with the equations that were given. It's going to look different um, depending on what equations you have, um, but since we were at 15 seconds, this is where we are, and if you look up here, that's exactly where you end up. So this, this vector, resultant vector here, is the same as this vector up here. Okay. So if a particle moves through a displacement of delta r in delta t, uh, then the average velocity is going to be given as such. And this is the average velocity that we've seen before. Um, it's just, but now we're going to use our change in r, which now has multiple components to it. It's not just in one direction. Um, so in the limit that delta t time shrinks uh, to a single point, the average velocity uh, it approaches, uh, or it's going to approach the instantaneous velocity. So you make delta t smaller and smaller. As the limit goes to zero, you're going to end up with the derivative. Um, so the derivative is just going to look like that. And again, previously we had, um, this was what we had previously dx dt, and now we're just doing dr dt, which is a vector, um, because it has multiple components. So when you kind of write that out, you see that the velocity is going to be the derivative of each of the components separately. So you have some x component in the i direction, some y component in the j direction, some z component in the k direction, and you can take these in, uh, derivatives separately. So take the derivative of x with respect to t, the derivative of y with respect to t, and the derivative of z with respect to t. It also can be written like that. Um, and then this last little comment at the bottom, the directions of the instantaneous velocity of a particular, uh, of a particle, is always tangent to the particle's path at the particle's position. So if I wanted to go back and look at the graph, um, you can see that this is going to be where a particle is moving. It's following this path here. Um, so at this point where we found the velocity is going to be tangent to the path. The velocity is going to be in this direction at this point. That's what we would expect. Um, so let's go ahead and, and make sure that's true um, by solving for the velocity. Right, so let's skip ahead and look at an example. Okay, um, so we're going to use the rabbit from the previous problem, um, and but we're going to find the velocity at b is equal to t. So when we're finding velocity, we're just going to take the derivative of each of the components. So we're going to start by taking the derivative of our x function, uh, which is given here. So you're just taking the derivative of this entire thing, and you get this result here. So we're just taking the first derivative. 
and you get negative uh, 0.62t plus 72. Um, just real quickly to go over what we did there, we pulled this 2 out, uh, out front, multiplied it by that, the 2 went, uh, or you subtract uh, 1 from that, or from the 2, and you get just t to the first. So t stays there. Um, here, this t is just going to drop, because um, the exponent is 1, so you just multiply by 1, and then you have t to the 0, which is 1. So that t is going to go away. Um, and then any constant term that you take the derivative of is also just going to go away. Uh, so what you end up with is shown. All right. And now, same thing for the y direction. Um, you're going to take the derivative of this function of our y function, and you get this result. Now, next thing you do is you plug in t for each of those, because you want to find what the velocity is at a specific time. Plug in t, and for the x component, you get negative 2.1 meters a second. For the y component, you get negative 2.5 meters a second. And putting that into unit vector notation, we're going to simply do that. So we would expect the velocity to be down and to the left. Down because you have a negative j, and to the left because you have a negative i. All right, so look at, looking at the graph, this is what we saw. And this is what we predicted when we looked at the previous uh, graph as well. Now if I wanted to find, again, the magnitude and the direction, um, all I would do is take use of the Pythagorean theorem up here, take the squares of both, and take the square root, and you get uh, the result in magnitude. And then for, the, uh, for theta, you're just going to use the tangent again. And you get negative 130 degrees. Um, you want to make sure that negative 130 is what you really want to find. So it's kind of shown here, negative 130 from the positive x is going to be in this direction. Um, so that's perfect. That's where we want it. All right. Um, now, same thing uh, like we did with, with finding the velocity. We can find then the acceleration by taking another derivative. Um, so the second derivative of the position vector or the, derivative, the first derivative of the velocity um, components are going to get us our acceleration. Um, it's talking about you know, the average velocity. Um, if you make dt really small, you're going to, or excuse me, delta t very small, um, you're going to end up with the derivative of v. And again, you can break it out into each of the components. So you have an i component, a j component, and a k component. And that's just the derivative with respect to t of each of those. Okay. All right, so let's work out all the uh, accelerations. All right, so the acceleration in the x is just going to be the derivative uh, of the velocity in the x direction, dt. So that is the derivative. And again, this d over dt is not a variable. All of that's showing is that it's going to be a derivative with respect to t. So t is the variable that we um, are taking the derivative of. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our velocity function in the x direction, or for x rather. Okay, and that is simply going to be negative 0 0.62. And since it's an acceleration, meters per second squared. Now same thing in the y direction, take dy component dt. Is the derivative of a y velocity function, which is 0.44t minus 9.1. It's going to be 0 0.44 meters per second squared. Now, putting that into unit vector notation, uh, you're just going to do negative 0.62 meters a second squared in the i direction plus 0 0.44 meters a second squared in the j direction. Now, if you're just looking at the components, we would expect the velocity vector to be pointing to the left and up because you have a negative x direction component, so we would expect it to be left. And then we have a positive y component, so we expect it to be up. So it should be somewhere in the second quadrant uh, or facing in that direction anyway. Um, okay, so I could also find uh, the magnitude again. I find the magnitude just by taking the square root 
of the x, the ax component squared plus the ay component squared, uh, and that's going to be 0 0.76 meters a second squared. And then theta, I'm going to find the same way, the tangent negative 1, or the, excuse me, inverse tangent of ay over ax. And that gets me negative 35 degrees. Uh, well, let's look at ne negative 35. Now, negative 35, if we draw our axes, is going to be somewhere in this direction, right? So negative 35 is somewhere around there. Uh, we when we looked at our components, we said that, well, it should be up and to the left. So it should be somewhere in this direction. Um, so that's going to happen sometimes when we do the tangent, but we have to do kind of um, the logic check and make sure that it's pointing in the direction that we would expect it to. Now, to get it all the way over to the other quadrant, all we have to do is, multi or is add 180 to it. So that's what it's kind of talking about here. If we take our negative 35, we add 180. So we take this, we add 180, we get this vector over here. Okay, negative 35 plus 180 is just 145. So really our angle should be positive 145 degrees with a magnitude of 0.76 um, meters a second squared. And as you can see in the picture, uh, it's up and to the left as we would expect it to be. All right, that's it for this lecture. We'll see you next time. We'll talk about projectile motion.